Born in Hopeless. That's right. Were you born to a family that uh, put that microphone over there? <laughs> you hold it, Joe. Oh, yeah, you just hold it. That's there good. You go. Were you born to a family that was involved in racing? Not at all, no. No, my dad worked for the New York News. Yeah. Paper. What and did he do with, for the news? He drove a delivery truck, delivered papers all over Brooklyn. Around Brooklyn. Okay. Yeah. And your mom is a housewife? And my mom raised four kids. How many? Four. Good for her. <laughs> <laughs> now, are you the only one that ended up in racing? Uh, yeah. So well, what made you, well, okay, wait. At age two, I heard a rumor about your eye. Yeah, I lost my, I lost my sight of my right eye. And I've been blind in that eye ever since. How did you lose it? Believe it or not, I was riding a wooden a wooden hobby horse. That's true. Oh, my gosh. That's a story I read. I just wasn't sure that was a true story or not. I was riding a wooden hobby horse, and I, I fell, and my eye fell on his ear, his wooden, wooden ear. On his wooden ear? <laughs> well, it was made of wood, of course. Wait, of course. So his, his uh, ear went into my eye. Um, I assume you, not that this would be part, do you then go to the hospital, and Mom is standing there oh. with him bleeding? Or just it's so long ago, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I read later on when there was a rider, maybe in Chicago. I there there was another uh, one. Uh, one uh, rider had one, one eye, sight in one eye, and they were not going to license him. And then they, he started bringing up my name and Walter Blum and blah blah blah. And they finally gave me a license, and he did ride, and he did pretty well. I thought that was pretty interesting because he's like, "Well, we've done it for 20 years without a problem." Yeah. The poor guy. You're like, <laughs> you're like, wait a minute. Like, you know, you're a perfect name to throw in there. Yeah. Well, somebody that. I don't know. I didn't have a jockey that was had one eye. I was pretty blind in this one, but not. So, yeah. but I don't ride, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was pretty lucky because uh, as I got older, mm -hmm. I I acclimated my my sight acclimated or I acclimated to my one eye, and I was able to fashion you. I was able to uh, so overcome uh, it. You end up, uh, I'm sort of going back <coughs> and forth. You're known as a rider that likes to be on the front end. Uh -huh. Was that anything? Think, or you no. Like no. Didn't like getting dirty. <laughs> no, I just it had nothing to do with my eye. Okay, interesting. I didn't know. Like, I tried yeah. to think of why you'd be like, but you were just such a great speed rider. Yeah, well, I had a knack of getting out of the gate and spinning, leading my horse on the lead, and so I won a lot of races that way. Right, which is really because I read a story about Kelso, and you rode him early on, and the, the man um, said he didn't want you riding him. It wasn't the trainer; it was an assistant, and then you get to the Well, anybody could have won on Kelso. <laughs> 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 All right, so we'll go back to the right. beginning again. So, 1953, so you rode your first winner, was it Saratoga? 53 was Saratoga at Jamaica. Oh, okay, all right. It was right. Saratoga at yep. Jamaica, which is in off the Long, uh, Long Island. Right, 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 right near Aqueduct. Absolutely, I huh? remember it was Jamaica. Well, not right, near, Jamaica. right near where Aqueduct. Yep, that's, so yeah. that's a pretty big meet to be your first win. Well, I actually, uh, I went to work for Hurst Jacobs when I was a kid. <coughs> and when, I, when I was 16. <laughs> and I galloped horses at Jamaica. And we and he was stabled at Jamaica, Hurst Jacobs was. Okay. So that was the place to be at that particular time. And Hurst Jacobs was the person to be with. Hurst Jacobs was my man. Yeah, because I read that, that you were under contract to him. I was under contract to him, yeah. And he so was within a year, you were winning all over the place, including you went to Santa Anita. <coughs> Yeah, I went to Santa Anita, and uh, he raced horses not only at Jamaica and New York, but he raced horses again in California and Maryland. And so he'd send me where he wanted me to go, and uh, I, I was very fortunate to be with him and get the opportunity that I had. Of course. Like, uh, one of the ones first newspaper articles that came up was, I think, I can't remember where you went. You went to Thistledown, because you were under contract to Mr. Jacobs. Yeah. I went, to, I went to Thistledown because... <coughs> At that time in New York, they were going to change the apprentice rule, okay. and I was going to lose the apprentice uh, almost uh, seven months of my bug. And so rather than do that, Mr. Jacobs let me go. He leased me to uh, a trainer in Thistledown, Ohio. And oh, Wilbur somebody. Uh, I mean, yeah, it, it, not that it matters, but Wilbur Enzer, it says. And s yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, something like that. Yeah. It's so, so long ago, I can't remember. But anyway, I stayed out there for about I stayed out there for about a month, and um, 
I can't remember wh why or when I came back to New York or left Ohio, but anyway, as things turned out, it turned out for the better for me, and I was very fortunate to be able to continue on my career. So you losing the bug didn't seem to hurt you? Uh, losing the bug didn't hurt me at all, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, like when you started riding, most people would be a little intimidated and might not do so well for a long time, like, but you came out of the gate running. You, was it because of Perk Jacobs, or was it because you were... Did you have a cocky attitude? Because like, you were so nice. Well, um, I'm really, I worked for Hurst Jacobs for two years before I rode. I galloped horses for two years. And by the time I did ride, which was when I was 18, in 1953, uh, I was pretty well knowledgeable about what I was doing and what I wanted to do. So it came easy to me. And the more I did it, the better I got. Well, at first, my parents were not too crazy about that. You know, <laughs> they wanted to me—they wanted me to go to sc uh, high school, graduate high school, go to college, of course, like all parents do. Right, right. So you didn't but graduate high school. No, I did not. I graduated Jamaica Racetrack. Right. <laughs> you went to the school of hard knocks. <laughs> yeah, racetrack's a lot of hard school. <coughs> but as I progressed, my parents got more into it, and of course, of course, they, how could they not? Of course, they—they uh, they were my—they were my my best. Um, this fan, yeah. Oh my god, I love that. Can you imagine? <laughs> that? That's so cool. Yeah, it was great. So early on, um, you obviously were crisscrossing the country during your apprentice. Uh huh. But then after you lost that, did you stay mostly in New York, New Jersey? Then. Oh, well, in um, if in 1953, after when when the races left New York, and we went to California, <coughs> and I was riding in Santa Anita, which is where I, I love I love to be at, at that time in the winter time. And I did really well out there with the apprentice, uh, w with the bug, and um, I was looking forward to coming back there. And of course, as I progressed and the years went by, uh, I just got pretty popular, and I rode everywhere around the country. That's, that's a good problem if you're so good somewhere, where everybody <laughs> wants you. Well, it got to it got to be that way, and I bought I got my contract. Uh, my contract expired, and then uh, I was on my own. So I could go wherever I wanted to. Now, did that was there a time period where most contracts sort of stopped? Like most people don't obviously have that now. Oh well, contracts, contracts, <laughs> contracts uh, ceased to be uh, right about the time that I lost my con. I got rid of my contract. Um, uh, the Jockeys Guild got after the uh, because a lot of the trainers were abusing the apprentice jockeys in the sense that they used them to work and used them to. Uh, as a hot walker and wouldn't pay him and wouldn't let him ride for nobody else. Right. Uh, when you were con under contract to one person, you couldn't ride against that person if you got a mount from this another trainer. So it became it became uh, almost impossible to do any good with contracts. Yeah, incredibly unfair yeah. to the so there were racing commissions around the country got together and did away with contracts. He still has a copy of one from Elizabeth Arden in there. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Yeah, I know Elizabeth. Wow. I did have a, con a, a contract <laughs> with her, but she didn't. That didn't last too long because she was not a she was not the best person to be on the contract to. <laughs> <laughs> well, she must have been a very strong person. So yeah, she was very strong. I'd she be pissed if I was she but she, she would kick my butt. She loved her horses. Yep. And the best story, <laughs> one of the best stories he has is with that lady. Mm. Right. Yeah, he w so he was under contract for her. Yeah, tell her that one. Well, I, I was under contract to her for uh, a three-month contract. It was, it, was a it was a highly paid contract for oh, that, for that era. Sense. It makes sense. And so then uh, she told me one day not to, I was writing this filly, I forget her name, and that was also at Jamaica Racetrack. And uh, she said, this filly doesn't like to be hit, don't hit her. <laughs> I said, yeah, I'll go on in this check with this thing. I won't hit her. But we came to the top of the stretch. I was heading there with this other horse, and and I was going to. Get, I was, didn't think I was going to win, so I did hit her. And right. I and then when I hit her, she took off. Okay. And so I didn't stop hitting her. <laughs> and anyway, that was the end of our contract. With oh my gosh. That was okay. That was the end of my my contract with uh, oh Elizabeth. So she bought out the contract. Right. Okay. And then within two or three months, he was back riding for her. Yeah, I, I, I rode a lot of horses for her, a lot of good horses for her later on. 
I mean, is that, was that her policy in general, or just that particular morning? Well, she was known to be not the, <laughs> she was known not to be the most knowledgeable person, okay, yep. but yep. thought she was. Well, people and she loved, loved like that. I she that. loved her horses, and she loved to take care of them. They, they did look, they were beautifully bred, and yep. beauty, beautiful looking horses, and and so anyway, we came back after, after that particular race. I pulled my horse up. I came back to the winter circle, and she was, and we won by two lands. Right. <laughs> but she was upset with with sure. with Jockey Blum. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so she had to make a long story short. She fired me and let me go, and yeah. uh, she paid me with the rest of my contract, and that was the end of that. But I still I wrote a lot for her later on after. That's so good. Yeah, she got over it. That was a long story. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so early on, let me make sure I get uh, first thing I said. Okay. And print, oh, okay. Mousy. Why? Well, <laughs> I can't find that online. Well, I'll tell you why, uh, how that happened. When I first went to work for Herb Jacobs, uh -huh. he had 60 horses, one, six, 30 in this barn, 30 in that barn. And he had, the foreman's name was Walter. He had two grooms named Walter and me. So every time he called Walter, all four of us turned around. Hey, yeah, you what? <laughs> so he said, "You're gonna, you're, na you're, you're gonna be mousy." Because you live like a mouse. Make, oh my Make that story short. Okay. I, be I became mousy ever since. That's what I mean. I found a million references to the term, but I found nothing that explained why. <laughs> well, that's why that picture you posted the other day. Mouse, cat, and mouse. With him at Hialeah with the cat. Yeah. Cat and mouse. Yeah. <laughs> mouse, <laughs> cat and mouse. Um, the yeah. guy that wrote that was the old media director at Nyra. Oh yeah. You put that online. I'm like, oh, good job, fans. <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, but that that name uh, stuck with me a long time. Even the fans yes. would call me Mouse. You know. Yeah. Oh, I, when I put it on Twitter, that picture or another one, absolutely, people are like, I remember yeah. Mousey, although they spell Mousey different ways. Do you spell it like with a G? Uh, well, I don't spell it at all because I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. Oh, did you really? It's like Alan Kurtz hating the hating the cheese. Yes, cheese. Yeah. <laughs> But I don't know. I just I tell you that what. Like anybody, bad. anytime somebody called me that by that name, I uh, I so give him a little look. Uh, you know, <laughs> I didn't like it at all. But I I didn't let them know that I didn't like he it. Give them the right, look, of course, of he course. Give, he give them the look. But I I, I handled it pretty well. I, I thought it meant that you were just like quiet as a mouse and just sort of. No, you know, no, no. See how like I took it as a really positive. Mm. I used to think it was a mousey because it came out of the gate fast. That was not it. <laughs> that was not it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Okay, because I did wonder about that, and I just couldn't find that anywhere. So, okay, leaving a subject like the salmon. Oh, later on, I read something that you were allergic to. Yeah, I had. Uh, I was allergic to animal hairs, dust, and feathers. Whole career. Oh, and feathers. Okay. Animal hairs, dust, and feathers. So animal hair would include horse hair. Oh, of yeah. course, yeah, big time. So what did you, like, when did you discover that? Because it was a later article that So that. I went to, I found this uh, allergist yeah. in, down here in Florida, we happened to be. And strangely yeah. enough, he, uh, he gave me these allergy uh, tests, you know, for testing yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, where they did the little, uh, little see what. Yeah. And so anyway, he found out that I was allergic to that, and he gave me a serum. He gave me <coughs> shots of serum that eradicated the allergy, the, uh, wow. the being allergic to that. And so uh, eventually uh, I, I got rid of that allergy. Okay, you got through that. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, good. So and the medication is what that he gave me did that. So the medication you just took a few times or whatever. Yeah, I used it, it I, I, I used it for about uh, a year, year and a half, two years. Sure. And I noticed that my allergy was getting less and less. Fantastic. So finally I was able to do away with it. Like did you, when you were walking around <coughs> the back, No, I couldn't. I got I had like uh, a wheeze in my chest, yeah. and I had like uh, shortness of breath. Yep. Okay. So, uh, wow. I had That's to so interesting to me. I, I had to get rid of that because if of I course. if I hadn't if I hadn't I wouldn't have been able to ride. I mean, of course, like the thought of having the mane <coughs> going in the, the sweat and the like just being just being around the horses, just walking to a horse's stall, I would I would run out of run out of air. Yep. I mean, you obviously love animals in general. I found quite a few pictures of you by Mr. Raftery. 
with different animals, like cats and dogs or yeah. whatever was around. I always was around. I always had animals around, and I was always around animals, so. I love that. Because you're, you're the same way, and I'm sure you are, too. Like, to not be afraid of them and not. Oh, no, you <laughs> no, not afraid of them at all. There are a lot of jockeys that, and, and Mr. Astor, he photographed nobody like he did you. Like, not even close. Well. There are other jockeys <laughs> where there's no intimate pictures like that, that they don't even seem to have a connection to the horse. Well, and you definitely do. Well, we, uh, Jim, Jimmy Rafferty and I were at a, had a great rapport together, and uh, for a lot for many years, we were very close friends. Yeah, well, there was it's a like reason. Like you and you, Bob. Yeah, and that he just loved the person. Yeah. And, and yeah. Like he would be inspired by you the same. I I know exactly because I just found pictures of you looking in the mirror, getting dressed for the race, and uh -huh. he's obviously in the jockey's room with you in an intimate. Yeah. But so you are friendly enough that that welcomes that. Oh. That made him comfortable. Yeah, oh, he, he was always, we were always comfortable with each other. And um, the reason, <coughs> one of the reasons we were so close is that he used to be the director and the choreographer of the Jockeys Guild show that we used to put on yes. at the Waldorf Astoria. I found negative. And uh, the best one. Oh, you didn't find <laughs> it? Oh, no, don't worry, I got somewhere. We'll dig it up. Anyway, um, so I, I had a, I had a somewhat of a talent for that too, right. and so I was his star. And all the time, every year when he put up the show on, he wanted me to be the star. He's, He's a, a bit of a showman. There's uh, a little showman. He was a showman you. and a show girl. Show girl, yeah. yeah. Tell me more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> his legs are beautiful, Bob. I'm telling you, you got to see them things. Uh -huh. Shaved so, up and so glistening. So apparently, there is a photo of you which I have not yet found, where you have absolutely beautiful legs, a dress as well. I have a I have a picture on oh, my yeah. phone. I have a picture on my phone uh, at the Waldorf Astoria on the stage of the Waldorf Astoria, and I had just won the Miss America pageant. <laughs> but that was the theme. That was the theme of our show. You pretty girl. <laughs> and so, uh, so uh, that so picture, great. that picture is floating around. And in fact, okay. I have I have it on my in my gallery on my phone. So right, okay, yeah, well, well worth seeing. We'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> dig that one out. Of there, <laughs> yeah. don't worry. Absolutely. Well, I can't imagine how much fun, like what a break. Well, we did. We did a lot. Of, we had a, a, a great deal of fun, and it was fun doing it. And it was, and we took it around. We, we used to go to ch uh, children's hospitals, and do those things. And I know you went to Shriner, like related to the Shriner. Yeah. Which I don't know what that means yet. I have to. But but I know that meant a lot of things with children's hospitals. Well, the the, sh well. the Shriners are the uh, St. Jude Hospital that takes care of kids just for just for no, no pay, no money at all. So. They do good. They do good. Good stuff. So you went around to hospitals if you were just trying to lift spirits. Just yeah, a, we, a bunch of jockeys would get dressed in our colors and our outfits and How great is that? show pictures and That's the autographs awesome. to the yeah. kids, and they loved. They loved it. Of so. course they would. That's not and that we matter. and we were happy to make them happy. So exactly. Yeah. So early, on, like, um, I was going through old negatives, and there were some years in a row, like ten, where you were winning pretty much more than anyone else. If there was a split division of a stakes race, you were winning both of those. That must have been sort of fun. Well, <laughs> yeah, it was always fun to win, of course, <laughs> which whatever, w whichever race it was. But um, uh, I don't remember too much about be a split entries winning both ends. But yeah, I, but I found maybe three or four. That and I sent pictures. That, that, had a great ages, that did happen. That did happen. Uh, not often, but a sometimes. Few times. Yeah. I'm, I'm just picturing the other jockeys in the room, but they still seem to like you. Well, the jockeys, my the jockey that I rode with and my period in general, got along very well all the time. And uh, as a matter of fact, they they voted me to be the president of the Jockeys Guild for many years. Yeah. And so uh, I had a good rapport with the jockeys and the trainers and everybody involved. Right, yeah, yeah. Jockey of the Winter was a title <laughs> for Florida. You're talking about your Jockey of the Winter. Uh -huh. And obviously the most wins in the country for two years or more. I think at least. 60, yes. That's pretty incredible. So you would have obviously come up with a huge fan base as well. Yeah, and then again, the jockeys also, uh, the people that nominated the jockey to be, to get the George Wolf Memorial Award. Yeah. And so if you're not, if you're on a bad terms with the jockeys themselves, <laughs> you're not going to win the George Wolf Award. No. There, there were one or two in recent years where I was a bit surprised. <coughs> <Yeah. laughs> But yes, I know exactly what you're saying. That's, that's probably the biggest one of the jocks of wins. Tremendous. Is, uh, that's very, uh, very uh, 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 honor to win. Tremendous, tremendous. 
Yeah. yeah. The, the Do you have a favorite racetrack? Because you're winning everywhere. Well, I love Santa Anita. I love the Gulfstream Park. I love Mama Park. And actually, I loved anywhere that I could w win at. <laughs> but I won. I was very lucky to win everywhere. So I, I liked it wherever I was. Oh, I, I liked. Yes. I liked Arlington Park. I liked anywhere out where I went. Yeah. Yeah, Hialeah is not bad. We love that. <laughs> we love that place. We oh my God. And Brunetti and him were. Hialeah um, was one of my favorite I like spots. Mr. Brunetti. He was an interesting guy. Yeah. I know yeah. things didn't work right, but he really. Uh, a lot of people didn't like him, but I liked him, and he liked me, and we got along well. And as a matter of fact, I worked for him after I got done riding. Wow. Yeah. Uh, he gave me my first job as a steward. <coughs> yep. I, I didn't read it that way, but I read that they were down to two contestants, and, and that then they, they chose you, and you gave the right quotes. Like, I'm so honored, I can't. I, and you've been stunning <coughs> to be a steward. Yeah. Really well, I went to the Jockey Club School for Racing Officials. Okay, yeah. yeah. And, uh, uh, but. If, if you spend as many years around the track as I had at that time, you didn't need to know school for racing officials. You knew what it was all about. Right, right. And as long as you conducted yourself in a proper manner, yep. uh, people accepted you for wh wh what you, who you were and what you did and how you did it. And so I got along well as a steward, and I, I enjoyed being a steward, too. I'm sure. And I went to work for the state of Florida as a state steward for many years until I retired in 75. No, I'm sorry. Right. Until yeah. I retired in 2004. Yep, exactly. Yep, that makes sense. So, yeah. so why did you end up retiring? Well, I'll You're tell you the truth. <coughs> I started having a problem. <coughs> Excuse me. I started having a problem with uh, COPD. Oh, yeah. And you didn't <coughs> want to stop and get some water? <laughs> 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 I know COPD can be... <coughs> yeah, it can be very terrifying. Yep, yep. And uh, it started to get bad around that time, so... I didn't want to do it anymore. Absolutely. And then, yeah, my mom had COPD. That's Talk into that. <coughs> anyway, that's why I stopped you. Okay, now, do you want to go get a glass of water now that I know about the COPD? Or you want to uh, no, I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> I just have to catch my breath once in a while. See, obviously, like, the, the horses that are listed often as your, you know, your best would be Affectionately and Gumbo. Like, we're, we're setting aside that you rode Kelso a time or two, but Gumbo beats Kelso repeatedly. Well, I was such a, I was such, I was so fortunate to ride some of the horses that I did ride, and besides those that you mentioned, I rode, uh, I was lucky to ride Mr. Prospector, yes. a horse called Parker, yeah. and uh, so many great horses, yeah. not only for Bruce Jacobs but for Jimmy Crow, and just everybody that I rode for. Uh, if they had a good horse, they put me on it, of course, and so. Now, do you have a favorite? Do you have a favorite? Like I have a list of ten of the horses you rode, but obviously you rode. Well, I guess, I guess, I guess maybe affectionately might have been one of my favorites. That's a good choice. She had a si half sister called the Priceless Gem. That was a oh, runner. Who I forgot they were half sisters. <coughs> who yeah. beat? I know you rode Priceless Gem. Yeah, okay. She beat Buckpasser. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. She beat Buckpasser, who was a uh, uh, horse, horse, horse of the year or whatever. Right. But uh, Mr. Prospector was a favorite of mine because well, all. Well, let me tell you something. There was nobody as fast as he was. The day he broke, he would sit. He would sit in the gate like that, looking at the racetrack, waiting for those doors to. Oh, that's real cool. And as soon as, as soon as those doors started to open, he was gone. And all you had to do was just stay tied on. And did you ride him in his first race? Yeah, I rode him in his did first race. Did you know he was going to be good, or no? Like, did you come into like? Oh, oh well, I knew. I knew before his first race. Uh, I went out and worked him one day. Okay. And I thought to myself, I told my agent, "Don't let this guy get away from you." Okay. <laughs> and so uh, I, I knew he was good right at the go, right from the get go. But yeah, I was 12, and all of a sudden reading in the paper about him breaking track records and just you know blazing, blazing. He was he was so he he ran seven over here at Gulfstream Park three quarters and seven and four. I never hit him. Yeah. And uh, he set the track record at that yep. time. Yep. And I think if I had really asked him to run, right. he might have run seven flat. Right. Yeah. So you obviously but I had a lot of luck on a lot of good horses, and uh, I rode a horse called Boldnesian. Uh, of course. Boldnesian out in California for Johnny Longdon. Oh, he, that was the Santa Anita Derby. I'm, I'm sorry, it wasn't Johnny Longdon. It was, uh, yeah, it was a Derby. Right, okay, okay. And the trainer was, I, I could tell you if I, give me about th three days to think of his name. <laughs> or five minutes on Google. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember who had Boldnesian, but yeah, I remember reading you read the Santa Anita, you won the 
<laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say need to do me. Cool. Yeah, very cool. Actually, anytime, anytime you win a derby, it's cool. <laughs> you rode in two Kentucky derbies. Yeah, I rode in uh, two or three. I'm not sure, but. What was that like? Like, did you did you get teary eyed with the, you know, the, uh, the, the, the Kentucky home or no? Were you just? Well, the first time I rode in a Kentucky, Kentucky derby, I thought to myself, you know, it's great to be here, great to be involved, and and I and I took it kind of like just another race, but. Okay, but when I walked on a racetrack and they started to play my old Kentucky, okay. my old, how's that go? My old Kentucky home or something. Yeah, okay. They say that gets you. Well, it does get to you. you I'll tell you that. It gets you a little up in your throat. And uh, and it was just quite a thrill to be involved. Right, right. But I, I wasn't lucky enough to be on a, a, a good enough horse to win, I don't think, uh, any of those times. But you had a pretty good horse in the 1971 Belmont. Uh, yes, I did. <laughs> Yeah, Pescatcher was a uh, Pescatcher was a nice horse, and I was lucky to ride him. Had you ridden him before the Belmont? Yeah, I rode it. I, rode, I got just uh, beaten the Jersey Derby on uh, on him, okay. and I can't think of the horse that. Oh, well, Bold Reasoning. Oh. Bold Reasoning. Yeah, that's true. Okay, yeah, that's a pretty good horse too. Okay. He won the Jersey Derby that year, and uh, I finished. I just got beat. I should. <laughs> I, 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 I tell you the truth, I, after that race, his next race was at Belmont. Right. Okay. Which is like five days Which later. And a completely different distance, obviously. And I yeah. and diff di different distance, different track, and some different horses. Right. So uh, he went off at 35 to 1, and I thought he couldn't lose. No way. Yeah, I didn't Did think. Did you play him? Well, I never played. I never bet the horses, strangely enough. That is strange. Greg Walker doesn't either. Well, no, well, I was the terrible <laughs> handicapper. I was oh, okay, good for you. I was a for, good for a Nolan. great jockey, he was a bad handicapper. Yeah. Good for Nolan, that. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, otherwise, you know, I don't, I, you might get too, like, pissy at me. Or so, hold on. He rode at Monmouth. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> right here. At Monmouth Park, he rode, I think there was eight races. Right, but I think that's it. Okay, go ahead. I think there was eight races that day. No, that was right here. Okay, here, Gulfstream Park, Barb. There's eight races. My grandmother, his mother, okay. my bubby, she loved him. She bet two dollars on every horse anyway, no matter what he said. Okay. So he told her mom, the first five or six I ride are just okay. They could win, but they're just okay. But the horse in the last race, I love. Okay. Instead of two dollars, you bet your five dollars. Well, he won the first six that day, I think. And of course, the horse in the eighth race got beat. <laughs> and poor Bubby bet her five dollars, but she it didn't matter. She bet two dollars on everyone anyway. Wow. But that's what a handicapper. That's why he had. He was lucky to have a great agent. <laughs> he was lucky. So in other words, yeah, betting, not betting was the correct choice. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because if you have six winners every day, you might as well bet. Yeah, if he would have bet himself at Mama's Park just in Jersey for a winner. Oh yeah, a winner. Yeah, ROI, I'm, I'm return overall. on investment. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was not a good handicapper, and not only that, uh, I, I, I just every time I walked on a racetrack, I thought my horse would win. I just. Which is great. It's I like just. Pasca yeah. I'll go back to past catcher, who you were feeling really good about. Canyon Arrow, seventy-one thousand fans, <laughs> all rooting for Canyon Arrow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So he said it was like the biggest. I think it was the biggest crowd in history at that point for a Belmont state. Right. Yeah, that's what they all came up for the race. Yeah. These uh, 80,000 80, <laughs> uh, Venezuelans or whatever they were. I've seen the photos. They all had flags. They had yeah. big signs. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, but and he was going for the Triple Crown, Ken yes, Nero was. was. Yes. So they were they were really disheartened, but I didn't give a damn. I just, <laughs> I, I was t tickled to death. That's her, I mean, that's your job is to win the race. And it's not like you beat him by a nose. They were, he was fourth. Yeah, he was fourth. And Somebody uh, was going to beat him either way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That's right. Oh, my God. That must have been funny, though. It's like when, when Sonny Jones lost in the Belmont. Yeah. It was quiet when he came down Victory Lane. <laughs> yeah. You probably had the same thing. Oh, the same thing. Yeah. Uh, flags rolling down. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. They were good. They were like, they were not happy people. Right. And I remember, I was 10, <laughs> and I was reading the newspaper. I was like, oh. But it's not like I cared. Like, I wasn't against you winning. I just felt sorry for Canyon Arrow, who was not quite the same again. But 
Well, if I if I hadn't have won that, if I wasn't able to win that race, I would have certainly rooted for Kennedy or myself. Right. I would have loved to have seen him win it if I hadn't won it. Yes. <laughs> but since I did win it, I was very happy. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's fantastic. I love that. So, um, let's see. Got, but what was Gunbo like to ride? Like, do you remember? Him yeah, Gunbo was a great horse too. Um, he was a big strapping horse that that you had to kind of. Uh, we had to kind of make him run or ask him to run. You know, he liked, he ran well from the stick. Uh, he ran well if you picked him up and held him together. And um, he he loved to compete. You know, he loved to beat the horses he was with. And every time we came down to stretch with any 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 horses, right. he looked like he was like looking at him and I, just, I got you, you know. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, and that's the way he was. He right. was just, a, he was just a, he was not the easiest horse to ride, but he could fly. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah well, Two different horses. Well, you probably didn't have to ever get after Mr. Foster. I never had to hit him. <laughs> I never had to use my stick with him. Well, what came pretty neat, like when you kept winning and you're beating Kelso, were people well, sad about that or were people like, yeah, you took uh, the stick well, he's a great horse? I think I only beat Kelso with Gunvo the one time. Oh, Kelso won the 64 Woodward. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was twice, but don't get me wrong. But he won, some big, he won some nice races. He won the Whitney at Saratoga. Yep. Although Kelso wasn't in there, right. but I don't think Kelso, I don't think he beat Kelso, but that one time. But that 64 Woodward is that's one of the most valuable programs. Of course, you didn't beat you didn't beat Kelso many times, no matter who you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to ride Kelso one time. I got to ride Kelso more than once. I, one time I got beat on him. You got a second and a win. Yeah. <laughs> what, what was it? I mean, Kelso was obviously already super good. He wasn't what he. Well, the first time, the had. first time that I rode him, actually, he was a gelding. I mean, uh, oh, he, was he, he was still a colt, and so uh, he ran once or twice, and then um, the trainer cut him, uh, gelded him. Okay, very interesting. Carl Hanford. Was it Carl Hanford that had him? He had him eventually. I don't know if he had him. Early. He didn't have him then. No, okay. he. The guy before him. Okay, Bohemia Stable, right? Mrs. DuPont. Bohemia Stable was Mrs. DuPont. He was a trainer. But he was five years. Um, five years. Let me I'm, trying to, I'm, I'm trying to think while I'm talking <laughs> to you. But anyway, after they cut him, he must have thought, if I don't start running, they're going to cut my throat. <laughs> I think it's going to get worse. <laughs> because he became a different horse once they cut him. Well, that's what it looked like in the PPs. That that's right around the time where he suddenly. Yeah, he, he's. He suddenly got it. And the Dewey won by 12 lengths. He. he he got the message. He he became he a he got a, he became a hell of a horse. That's so great. Now, what I didn't remember affectionately in Price Wars Gem were related. Like, did they act similarly? Do you remember? Well, um, pri uh, affectionately was a, a very giving mare. You know, she she also loved what she did. Well, of course. And uh, but she had a lot of talent. Uh -huh. And you could you could you could be come from behind on her. You could lay in the middle of the pack. You can go to the lead on her. But she didn't like to be rushed. However, she broke. She broke. Wherever she was, she was. Right, okay. But when you asked her to run, you better be tied on because she, she'd find a way to get home. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. And Price's Jam, <coughs> you know, you know, I tell you that Price's Jam was a half sister, but I'm not really positive about that. Said that. Well, you must have ran on that but Price's Jam was an, uh, a, a different kind of a filly. She was just also very fat. She's very sprightly on her legs. She could just like be running this way and zip that way, and you know she was very light-footed. I don't know what you might call that, but uh, you didn't have to worry about her running. Running her best, she ran her best every time she ran. And How she. Do you remember these specifics? Well, some of these horses you can, you can, and some of these horses you just go right out of your head. Free remember him at all? Free text? Uh, not really, no. Okay, yeah, he ended up beating Eva Ridge in the, in the big mm, Mike's not with you at that point. Mike owned him. Yep, Stavola. It was a Stavola horse, and I have the winner's circle picture of you guys. Yeah, I don't, baby wing. I don't remember who trained him, but... Uh, I don't remember that either, but you had over 4,000 wins, so you can be forgiven <laughs> for, <that. laughs> for not remembering. Did you have a favorite trainer other than Mr. Jacobs?
Yeah, he was my he was my best pal. He was my best buddy, and I, I loved him. Um, but I like Jimmy Crow. Um, most of the, most of the trainers I rode for, we got along very well. I always had a good rapport with the trainers. I even had a good rapport with their their help, their foreman, assistant did. trainer, groom. I treated them all pretty well, and I, if I won, they won. Yeah. Like it's still not really a thing. A lot of times a jockey will, you know, not, uh, love not bother going back to the barn or certainly not bother yeah. thankfully bringing things to anybody else. Uh, I went back to the barn every every morning. I love that. So it was it was my favorite place to be. At, yeah. Now you do you ever go back over there now? No, I don't go over there very much anymore because of this problem I have. Okay, yeah, just getting around is a thing. I mean yeah, there's nothing I can do with the yeah. barn and it's very it's a very strange barn. <laughs> yeah. Very it's strange true. barn. So you obviously love animals, favorite track, favorite. Did you have like a favorite jockey friend? Like did you have like a one and one A kind of thing? Uh, well, when I first <coughs> when I first started to ride races, Eddie O'Carroll was still riding, and he was my favorite jockey. That's remarkable, sure. Um, but um, later on, as uh, as things went on, uh, John Rotz became a real good friend of mine. Gentlemen. Yeah, and he's too not doing too well. Shoot, I know he's still alive. Yeah, I just talked to him the other day. Oh, did you really? Yeah. Oh my gosh, like he's from. He's from Illinois. Chicago? Okay, yeah, okay. He lives in Decatur, Illinois. Okay. But anyway, yeah, I had a few uh, jockey friends, although Salomon. Mickey Salomon. Oh, Mick Salomon, right. And I played a lot of golf together. And so You're a we. Good golfer. Bob uh, was. He's a golfer. Well, probably not COPD, but. <laughs> he's. Yeah, he, yeah, I believe that makes pretty golf. good. He taught me everything <laughs> I know. <laughs> He's a golfer, yeah. I have photographs of you golfing, though. Do you? Negatives, yeah. Incorrectly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> photographs of you doing that. Really? No, I, I, I used just to, got a scan of it. I used really to play good. pretty good, but i getting older, and sure. and I can't handle that game too we well. All do, we all do. <laughs> and now with this what I have now, I can't even go to play golf. So. Yeah, yeah. It's getting to, be a, getting to be a bitch. No, that's not. Yeah, my mom had the same. She was super active and played tennis and then couldn't. Yeah, right. So she kept right. going a long time with it, but uh, she missed what she couldn't do anymore. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. So did you go to every winter generally, like down to Florida, then up to Monmouth, basically? Well, I had a, <coughs> I had a kind of, uh, uh, I had, a, I had, a, I had a situation where I lived in New Jersey. Yep. So I rode the three Jersey tracks: Atlantic City, Monmouth Park, Garden State. Oh, very good. Okay. <coughs> Shot at all of them. Yeah, <laughs> and like then in the winter time, I came to Florida occasionally, but I loved to go to California. So I loved, uh, I loved, because I love San Lita. Sure. And um, that, that was my route, uh, my route circuit. Did you have one main? Uh, and again, I'm making you talk and talk and talk. But did you have one main agent, or did they shift over the years? No, no, no. Career? I had, I had uh, Ralph Ralph Theroux was my first agent. His father. I've heard how great he, yeah. I know, yeah, Ralph had said his dad was a great agent. Yeah, well, um, wow. he was my first agent. And then after after him, I had him for about, maybe during my bug apprentice year. Yeah. And be, even before I lost my bug, I became acquainted with Fats, Harold Wisman. Okay, yeah. And, he, okay. and he was my agent yeah. for yeah. 25, 23 years. Okay, I've got negatives of you with Fats, but it's <laughs> such a perfect agent name. <laughs> 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 it's just a well, he was a. With bats, I'm like, I know who that would be then. He was a kind of a character, and he was, and everybody liked him, and he liked everybody. He had a good, he had a very good personality, and he got along well with the people he dealt with. Yes. And he was a very, he was much a very big asset for me. Yeah, was he actually big? Oh yeah, he was big. <laughs> they didn't call him Fats for nothing. <laughs> Oh God! I know. I think I think I think the most uh, precious thing in my in my mind uh, was when I was born. Barb. I was gonna say other than your family. It's when I was born. He yeah. cried that day. No, I I, I think the most he cried that day. The, he did. the best thing about being a 
in my career is to have had the career that I had. And, uh, and I was just happy to be going to the track every day, being on live horses, you know, and just being accepted and accepted by the people that I rode for and rode with and were in that business. Oh, yeah, well, now, I, and not to go back, because I was just going to wrap that up, but the Hall of Fame, what was that like to be inducted in the Hall of Fame? Oh, well, <laughs> cried. that was another story, and I just uh, I couldn't believe that at the time. Did you get a phone call? What happened? How did they tell you? Well, um, I, mean, uh, I can't think of the I can't think of the guy's name who was with the who was he was with the racing forum. He was a writer for the racing forum. Cool. Uh, was it Joe Hirsch? No. Not too bad. They were like good, they were good friends. It, it wasn't okay. Joe Hirsch, but he did anyway. He he okay, mentioned well, yeah, well, he mentioned something to the fact that you know you ought to be in the Hall of Fame, and I'm going to see that you are. And so he started a he started like a, a campaign. He started a campaign for me, yeah, and. Oh, I wish I could think of his name. Anyway, but that was a, that was a, one of the biggest thrills of my of my career. And when I got up there at Sar in the, on the stage at Saratoga, I almost I almost couldn't talk because I was so overwhelmed. You know. I can't imagine. Yeah, it like was. I obviously, really can't imagine. <laughs> it's like reaching it's like reaching the pinnacle of any Absolutely. of any sport, anything that you do, yep. and you reach the top of that game. That's what it was like. So great, because I was a kid then. I think you were 75, 1975? What's that? Was that? When you were inducted. And I was still a kid. No, I, I, so quit, I quit riding in 75. Oh, so I wonder when you got it. Do you remember? 80, it doesn't matter. No, I can look 80, that up. It was 83 or 4. I'm not sure. Okay, yeah, that doesn't matter. So you had, like, family with you and everybody celebrated. Um, so well, by that, time, by that time, my parents were gone. Oh, that's a shame. So, yeah, that was a shame, because they were very proud of me, and they would have been you know, whether I got that or not, they were proud of me anyway. Right. Were, were they still around when you won the Belmont with Pascat? No, no. They no. weren't. They weren't okay. there. They uh, yeah, your mom, his mom was. Okay. Your mom? Your mom was still alive. Bubby was still alive. What are you talking about? In 75? 71. In 1971. Yes. In 71, Bubby was alive, Pop. Because she was alive when He's I my was. my Asian now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 71, <laughs> 71, she was alive. Yeah. Well, well, I'm thank you, Walt. You got it. Walter, I'm not going to bet on that, but. Well, uh, well, no, we won't be writing that up as a. I remember because I met my grandma, and I was born in 80 or 81, <laughs> so I know, because I ate her potato pancakes. Oh, right, okay. And my sister knows because she was there. So, in 71, Barb, she was there for pass catching. <laughs> There you go. You're cutting your mom a little short. Yeah, though. you're cutting her short. You cut her by like 20 years, Pop. Oh, so she might have even been around for your Hall of Fame and <laughs> No, she... <laughs> would be gone by then. No, she would have been there, Dad. She passed away in like 86, and I think that... Or and 85. I th and, and I Dad think that was... In, Dad got inducted that year. Oh, The year man, she passed okay. was okay. the year he got inducted, okay. if I remember. I think it might have been 87. I'm not sure. Something like that. <laughs> but anyway, no, she was not there. But the people that I, the people that I did know and did love were there, right. so it, it, it was just a, a wonderful a wonderful time of my life. I totally cannot imagine how great that would be. Yeah. You're very lucky you're in the Hall of Fame. You're very lucky you, that you're in racing. So. Well, I just, I've just been lucky all my life, and and uh, God's been good to me, yep. and th I thank I thank Him every day for what Great. transpired. Absolutely. Okay. You guys got questions for him? Love you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really a question. I love you too. <laughs> Go ahead, Wally. What do you got? You're gonna ad lib now. Oh. Get to get to the point. Don't be. We're not gonna ad lib now. Okay. It's to be a loving interview, just father and son. Oh yeah. 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 So why don't you why don't you why don't you tell Barb? Or why don't you tell everybody out there how you used to get to the racetrack when you were a kid, first starting out? How would you get there? Oh, that's a long story too, but that's a good one. Uh, at that time, I lived in East Flappish in Brooklyn, New York, and I used—I didn't have a car. I was 15, sixteen years old, and so um, I used to play hooky from school and go out to the Jamaica racetrack. Now, how I got to Jamaica racetrack, 
I had to take a trolley car to the high belt parkway and hitchhike to to Jamaica racetrack. And then this mailman picked me up one day and he, he as he drove out there he asked me what my you know what what am I doing out here? You're a young guy. Make nice to At four in the morning, what are you doing on the Bell Parkway? Yeah, so then he said, Well I'll tell you what, I go this way every day and if you're here at this time of morning, I'll pick you up. Oh my gosh. So I got a study ride to the track. <laughs> <laughs> but after I did that for about two, three months the school that I went to, the principal sent a letter home, okay. and they suspended my suspended me from school. <laughs> so my when I came home, my dad said, "How did it go today at school? How'd you do? How you doing?" Oh, I did pretty good, Dad. Oh my God. Well, he kicked my ass against the wall, <laughs> <laughs> he, and he, so anyway, they, he found out what I was doing. Oh my God! And um, that was a story. Uh, that was a long. That's fantastic. So. We have another uh, story that you should should be told. So back then they didn't have airplanes. The horse didn't fly in airplanes. Sure. So when they would go from New York to California, it was a train ride. Oh my gosh, right. So he's not riding. He's galloping horses mm-hmm. for Hearst Jacobs. <laughs> oh, you're not getting off easy, Pop. The camera's there. I got the microphone. I know all your stories. You see? So... We're going to let a couple of them out there. This is a great one that they should have. You're lucky that they're nice stories. Yeah, they're great. <laughs> so, don't be embarrassed. I mean, you're a kid. So, he's working for Hearst Jacobs, galloping horses. I don't even know where he's going. He hasn't, <laughs> he hasn't ridden a race yet. They're going to California. <clears throat> now, him and his bet one of his best friends, when he came around the track with a guy named Tony Falco, they're going to ride a train to California. So his mom, my grandmother, packed him a lunch and sandwiches and drinks. And the train stops, you know, periodically on the way out to California. It's not a straight shot. So before he, before they even went, don't, don't, don't be upset. It's, it's okay. It's going to be okay. I'm not upset. You so before he went, before he went, before he went, Ten miles, Barb. They were done with the sandwiches, drank their sodas. They had so now they stopped. Now, what happened when the train stopped? Well, how come you don't keep on if you got? Oh, I'll keep on. Just yeah, just sit there and look pretty for the camera, Pop. So the train stopped, and him and Tony Falco got off. Naturally, guy tells him, "Hey, you guys, there's a shop in town. You walk into town, get your stuff, but hurry up. You know, we're not going to be here for an hour. It's going to be." 20 well, minutes. I can see where this is going. <laughs> so him and Tony Falco, they didn't mess around. They went down there to the store, bought what they needed. They got two grocery bags each full of stuff. And as they're walking back, drinking, right. a, drinking a soda or holding their bags, they hear, choo, choo, <laughs> all aboard. <laughs> now they, I don't know how much they were making at that time, but I'm sure they spent most of their money on food. So they start running. And dad's got the bags and he's running. And Tony Falco's running. Well, Tony Falco said, Dad said, we got to throw these bags to get on this train. He said, I ain't throwing the bags. You do what you want. I'm not throwing my bag. Well, Dad threw his bags away, and he made it on the train. Okay. Thank God. Well, poor Tony Falco. <laughs> hey, Walt, wait up. Mouse, who? Whoa. Mousy. There was no waiting up for Tony Falco. He left Tony Falco sitting there. <laughs> and poor Tony Falco. So he gets there, oh and God. the boss says, hey, Walt. Right, where? Uh, what happened? Where's Tone? Tone's back in Iowa or wherever <laughs> we left him. I don't know. He held on, but he's got groceries. He's okay. Oh, my God. So, yeah. So, so he had to wait for the next train, and he ended up making it to California. But, and then so, okay, that's so. Story. Tell us that story. <laughs> well, you, you had to be there, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, why, oh, so here, tell, tell tell him when tell him when you went to Cal. So when he went to California, when he got there to California, at that time, if you were under eighteen, and you lived at the racetrack, you had to live in the dormitory where, you know, you were it was you were supervised. You had to go to class, didn't you? Yes, you had to go to school. Did you have to go to school? <laughs> yes, you had to go to school. <laughs> so. <doing> this <laughs> yes, we had to we had to go. To, we, we didn't have to go to school. They sent the teacher to the racetrack. Oh, wow, okay. 
Okay. See, in those days, you had we had to stay in the dormitory on the grounds. Sure, I can see that. Sure. At San Lita. So they had a big dormitory, beds, uh, places to hang clothes and stuff like that. And they sent this teacher from the school to give us our lessons, you know, okay. geography, history. Nice. Oh, yeah, it was very nice. Okay. Only we, instead of reading the books that he bought, we taught him how to read the racing for him. Oh, my God. And this guy became a real horse player. <laughs> by, the ti by the time, by the time the uh, San Anita was over, we didn't know anything about, uh, uh, about the Civil War or anything, but he knew everything about racing. <laughs> but in what, the, what I was getting to in that story is... <laughs> That was a good part of the he story, met, by he the met, way. He met a lifelong <laughs> friend there who just passed Aww. away, Bruce Headley. Oh, sure. You know, they were close. And, wow. you know, he lived there with this guy, Tony Falco. And right. Yeah. You know, he got the Those were, well, we could go on with these stories all day long, but. Well, that's what, that's what you should have on there. <laughs> that's what you should have on there. Stories that, you, you know, Ashley can look back on. Yeah, <laughs> for the grandkids. Yeah, these are for the grandkids. Don't think of yourself. Give me this one. Don't think of yourself here, Dad. You know, I mean, yeah. you. Who raised this kid? Yeah. He says all the time he doesn't know what's wrong with me. And if it wasn't for my blue eyes, Barb, I would get a DNA test. I really would, because I'm tall and good looking. You know, Gorgeous. he's short and good, looking. and good looking. He's good looking. Yeah, but your tongue is too but long. But my tongue, uh, yeah, my tongue's too long. But in the meantime, he has some great stories. He needs a tongue stick. That you know, nobody, up. nobody knows about. Nobody knows about, right. you know, well, like, you, like, so why don't you videotape me sometimes, darling? So I should, you know, Karen Hedley did, I her, should, she videotaped her dad all the time. I know, I Karen should do that. that. I do do that. I put him on. He's the king of TikTok, this He's guy, riding a bicycle. bad grandpa. He's yeah. If you want uh, go on TikTok, he's 87, riding 87, 86, 86, 86, 80, 86, 86, 86, I don't know, 86, 86, 86 or 87. TikTok but he's really 40 in his head <laughs> poor guy and, and, you're, and you're like i'm the dad. same i'm the same i'm the same it's like peter pan syndrome never going to grow up Good. Good. stay stay young forever exactly. in the meantime you should so one more story and we'll wrap it up why don't you tell her what happened when you went to work for hearst jacobs and they finally allowed you to get on a racehorse oh. what happened mr flares i think his name was and the pony boy was Mickey. Well, that's another one where you had to be there. Huh? But Mr. Flair's was, first of all, I was as green as the grass. <laughs> and I used to get on uh, a couple of horses, but one of them was called Mr. Flair's. Okay. And he was a monster. I mean, he was treacherous, bad, mean, nasty. <laughs> he was. And I hated, and I hated him, and he didn't like me too much. But anyway, one day we're coming back from the track, and Mickey, he always had me tied with the shank mm -hmm. um, because I was kind of green, and I couldn't, I couldn't get out of him in a million years, Mr. Flares. Anyway, he reared up and got loose from Mickey, and he ran down this macadam road, and then all I could think about, he's going to slip, fall on his, and me and him are both going to get killed. Anyway, when we got back to the barn, I was the color of your sheet there, of this, of this, uh, and uh, I, I slid off the back of him, and, and anyway, that was, the, that was the adventure of Mr. Flair's. But that was the first horse. Oh, my God. That was the first horse Hurst her Jacobs let you gallop. Well, that seemed sort of mean if he was that mean a horse. Well, that's how, that's how you learn. No, he figured, I guess he figured that Mickey had me and I was going to be fine. Yes, good point. Good point. So, uh. And I would have been fine if Mickey would have had, had me, but this, this Mr. Flash was a son of a bitch. And <laughs> <laughs> That's so he ran down that road straight back into his stall, Barb. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. No, well, right back to the barn. Back, back to the back barn. Back to the barn, okay, yep. And when I slid off of him, I went right down to the ground. My knees gave away. Oh, my God, of course. Yeah, I was, I was terrified. But anyway, I yeah. that was Mr. Flash. Well, that was all uh, uphill from there. Yeah, I mean, it was <laughs> or, or downhill. <laughs> or downhill. I know. It could go either direction. I know. Yeah. But that after surviving fantastic. that, I'm sure he knew he could make it as a jockey. I'm right, sure. compared to that. Compared to that, that's you know? fantastic. <laughs> oh, we do have a lot of negatives of you on the ground after spills, though. So tell her, tell her, well, here, well here, 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 here's another great story. Let me see this. <laughs> so, what? So you said <laughs> you said that Eddie Arcaro was one of your favorite jocks. Yes. So, 
why don't you tell a story about this time that you both fell in the mud and what happened? Well, that happened to be the Belmont Stakes, by the way. And he Black rode, Hills. and he rode a horse for Black Black Hills. Yeah. And I was on I was on a horse for Eddie Owl, called Lake Erie. That's a great story. And how I remember how I remember those names from way back then, I don't know because I, I don't remember too much recently. But anyway, we're coming down we're coming down the back stretch at Black Hills, and Shoemaker was on Sword Dancer. Okay. Yep. I think he won the race. He might have won that fifty nine dollar. So we 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 left the three eight pole, went around the turn, and the track was like sloppy, really. Anyway, Black Hills broke his leg and fell, of course, and I was coming to him, and I couldn't miss him. And as I got to him, my horse ran right smack dab into him, so we both fell. And I was okay; I wasn't hurt, but Eddie was laying in the mud with his face in the mud. Oh my God! Right. And he was like drowning in the mud. Yeah. So luckily, I was, I could see what was happening. I pulled his head, pulled his hair, to get his head up out of the mud. So, and uh, I might, I might have, I might have just saved him. And it would have taken forever. Like back then, you didn't have the ambulance. It would have taken a minute to get to him. Oh yeah, we didn't have no ambulance now. And Belmont's huge. And then, as it turns out, you know, they were when Eddie passed away. Talking about golf and golfers. When he passed away, he left that all. Well, I was a uh, old golf stuff. Golf. Oh my God, that's so neat. Golf, golf, I used to, I used, I used to play with him a lot at La, at Lagos. I have pictures of Eddie playing golf too. He also oh, looked like it. a very lovely form. Oh, he was a good player. Yeah. Yeah, that's what the pictures show both of you. Shoemaker too. Shoemaker was a good player. That's yeah, a lot of them. A lot. There was a lot of. Like to have that kind of competitive spirit too, and perfection yeah. and. Well, you. Know, <coughs> yeah. Well, do you do you play golf? If you no, do. I'm, I suck at it. I well. You know what's funny in life? In life, golf and horse racing kind of go like hand in hand. Right. Well, that's what's interesting. How many horse racing people are golfers? Like, so, you know, he said like I'm a, I am a good golfer, but I, I became a good golfer. He taught me a lot, but I became a good golfer because he, he was friends with a guy who was a great teacher, okay. named Bob Toski. Okay. And th you know they became friends because of him being a jockey. Sure. And Bob Toski at the time, he even now, you know, he's built like him. He, he could have been a jockey. Mm -hmm. But he was a golf pro, and he took a liking to dad. And <coughs> So anyway, as life went on and I came around, yep. thank God for dad knowing him. And, yep. you know, that well, guy. Thank God you came around. Oh, I do too, every day. <laughs> actually, every so. day, actually, right? Oh, uh, you know. <laughs> Just for the record, so we have it on video, he did win 4,300 and whatever, 82 races, races I think. 82 or 84. Those last two were the kickers. <laughs> but my little fella, my dad is lucky, very lucky, uh -huh. that I became this big. Because oh. it would have been Walter Blum Jr. you talk about. Yeah, you know, poor dad. So I made sure I ate a little more because I didn't want to take the shine away from him, you know. Well done. You got on the stretching thing. To stretch yeah, out. stretch it out. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. Do people? But, but my brother, my brother Jeffrey Rode. Yep, I have negative. And, um, you know, uh, I wanted to ride bad. Yep. But unfortunately, I got too big. Yep. But, like I said, he's lucky. Everybody out there, he's lucky that I got this big because... You won't even know who this little fella is. I mean, we would remember him and stuff, but... You'd be like, wow, you mean there was a senior? There was! You know, he did. <laughs> you can go on and on because she's going to cut this out anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then there's Ashley, too. You galloped. Yeah. Well, you yeah, why don't, you explain, why don't that. you explain your uh, your riding uh, days, Ash? Oh, gosh. Wait. Yeah, how, how yeah you go? liked... I mean, you, I know you when you were riding. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> My rating days weren't too long, yeah, but I tried. You do that. It's more than mine. I did, and I got there. Nobody wanted me to ride. They didn't want to help me, but I did it. Uh, it was great. No, and whoa, I loved whoa, whoa, whoa. it. I, 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 I tried to help you. A well, little bit. It could bit. become a <laughs> little interview. I did. <laughs> it's supposed to be a happy interview. I did. Yeah, right. 
We're gonna be fighting. Was... We're gonna be fighting in a few minutes. He's gonna scramble across your There's chair. a reason why we didn't want her to ride. Okay, why is that? To take away the Walter Blum Jr. No, 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 celebrity. No, no. Because <laughs> a women's place is in the kitchen. No, no, I'm not like that at all. Women, I believe. No, you do not. You no, love women. No, women are equal with any. They're t hey, any guy out there. Let me keep it safe. Oh, any guy out that there, was really fun. any like any guy out there yeah. that <laughs> thinks they're tougher than a woman, I got news for you, buddy. You're wrong. <laughs> women give birth. <laughs> they have all these things going on. Men just <laughs> think they're tougher. So no, a woman's place is wherever she wants to be. Oh man, he is still but, gonna get chicks But but for <laughs> but for for Ashley, I know my dad. Yeah, I'm not gonna speak for him. He could say it, but I didn't want her to ride. Because I knew she didn't have this. She didn't have this to do it. You know, a killer the, spirit? no, hor nice. horses, nice. horses, no. That's the coolest thing about horses is they know right away. As soon as you touch them, as soon as you get around them, they know. They can tell you're, if you're nervous, if you're scared, sure. if you're a little, yep. uh, you know, apprehensive. So I know because we grew up together and we grew up riding together. When the horses got to jumping around a little bit, it wasn't Ashley's favorite thing. <laughs> but could she ride? Yeah, she yeah. could ride. Yeah. But when they got to getting strong and getting tough, and yeah. that wasn't for her. Yeah. I so know. I knew. Yep. But I, uh, hey, I didn't, I, you know, my dad, we didn't want her to do it. But, hey, we weren't going to stop her. She tried. Yep. I, love the, I love you two. Just and then she, oh, you know, they can't take it. I, I'm so happy they're together because... I, Barb, my mom is the one. My mo mom, I love you, mom. Mom, I love you. Dad, I love you too, but dad, Ashley's dad. Stop hitting your dad in yeah. the face. Just stay Stop close to her. Stop hitting a Hall of Fame member in the face. <laughs> but in the mean, that, that's, why, that's why I didn't want her to ride. Right. Fair enough. Well, fair enough. I did ride, but I'm thankful I'm not riding. <laughs> <laughs> and now I have two kids and grandpa, grandpa. and a great uncle over here. Her yep. husband, they own and my husband, we have horses now, yeah. and uh, we can ride them anytime. So. And you still go to the track too. I yeah. do. Yep, and obviously Wally does. So. Yeah. So and you can take it back for a moment. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah. I think. I, I, oh, now who loves the mic there, boy? No, I just want to get away from him. That's oh. all. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to tell him, uh, tell Bobby that he he needs a tongue strap. Yeah. They don't but anyway, uh, he needs like a figure eight that's no. complete. Yeah. No more stories for you. You're done. And a run out bit. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that. You're, 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 Sometimes you're, you're just one of those rogues. <laughs> that's what I am. My main man, Brian Lynch, out there. I love you. <laughs> We're both rogues together, buddy. Oh my, my dad God. just I got called. I'm a rogue. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Because he was here the other night and he was saying that. Oh, I heard he was down here. Oh, yeah. yeah it was a, a scene. You guys have like a little party going on here all the time. You got Robbie Alvarado. All the time. Was Cory Landry here? Landry was here. Yeah, Jenny thought so, but she wasn't sure. She said, I don't know. I think it's Cory Landry down there. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we use. So it's like a we use, party. Yeah, we use Landry for. Yeah. We use Landry for chum. If you <laughs> film, film out there, we put him out there. He's good bait. Yeah, he would be. He's then, yeah, it's perfect. He's his belly's up yet. Yeah, he's got a funny <laughs> smell to him. But then Alvarado's a great. He's fishes off the deck here. It's great. You okay. got, you got, you know. Do any, do any, any older riders ever come over here, or is it all like the young generation? No, the, 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 the yeah. riders from my generation yeah. are gone. They're not all gone, but I know what you're saying. I was pretty happy that John Rossi's still around. Well, Mickey, so Mickey, Mickey Solomon still calls Rossi him all the time. And <laughs> so I still don't know what he was saying. Right, I did write back. You're in, thank you for uh, allowing me to interview this wonderful father of mine. He's a good father. I'm lost for words here because this it's just I can't I can't he, I can't come up with any more questions for him because he doesn't want to tell any more stories. Yeah, he's pretty grateful for that right now. Yeah, he is. <laughs> in the meantime, Dad, I love you. Yeah, I love you I too. Love you. Oh, my pleasure.
heading straight. There's a handler with him. And they're up for the lead. On the inside, that's going to be pass catcher going out to the lead. Caniero showing a little speed. He's second on the outside, really, right now. First finder is third. And up on the outside, it's Salem. We've got a bunch going into that turn. And here's the surprise. Bull Reason is up there close. He's going to show speed to David into the first turn. It is Canyon Arrow the second. He's on the extreme outside. Pass catcher is second on the inside. Then it's Bull Reason in third, followed by Twist the Axe. He's getting the drop back uh, just a bit now. And moving in along the rail is Purse Finder. Salem dropped back out of it. Now he's picked it up again. And then on the outside, Jim French moves in between horses. He's followed by Adobe Ed and High Finder. Then it's Royal JB. The way back is good behaving. And then on the outside of him, Sets of Fear and the Trailing Horse. As we go down the back stretch, is Epic Journey. We're moving down the back stretch, and Canyon is going to make him catch him today. He's two lengths in the front. Chris Piax is now making a move like he'll try and go with the leader. On the inside and riding in third is Bull Reason. And these two are now drawing up to Canyon Arrow. He has not been extended at this point. They've just galloped along the back stretch and four still is pass catcher. And much further back it is Purse Finder. And then on the outside, Adobe Ed, but he looks like he's dropping back out of it. And coming on a bit is Jim Prince. They're going to go in the turn, and they have a long way to go yet. This race isn't over. It's still Canyon Arrow of the second. Has a head on Twist the Axe by a length and a half. Now two lengths over pass catcher in third. Gold Reason is now fourth. Continuing to move up is Salem, now fifth. First finder is now sixth. Then it's Jim French in seventh, and High Binder is eighth. We have three horses, and they're all together for the lead, and Canyon Arrow has been there all the way, and he still has it. Canyon Arrow's competition now on the outside is pass catcher. That's Canyon Arrow and pass catcher running together. Twist the axe is third on the rail and dropping back. I believe pass catcher has taken over the lead. Yes, he has as they come to the corner pole. That is pass catcher taking over the lead and he's opening it. He's opening it up to three lengths. Canyon Arrow the second is second by two lengths. Then further back still bold reason. Beginning to come on on the outside now. On the extreme outside is Purse Finder. Jim French is down on the rail. It's Pass Catcher, the leader. Then Canyon Arrow, the second. Jim French is on the rail. And on the outside, Bull Reason. They're going to hit the finish. Pass Catcher. Jim French is making up ground. He's moving fast. But at the wire, at the wire, at the wire, Pass Catcher is the winner. He is the winner. And on the inside, Jim French is second. Then they cross the wire close with Bull Reason and Canyon Arrow, the second. That's the way it was. A tiring horse, but Jim French could not get out.